Welcome to I Just Have Something to Say. Today we're going to be reviewing a YouTube video that um, I can only say that reflects the most reckless gun owner that I've seen on the internet. There are so many mistakes that have been made through this video that I can't break it up and have it make any sense. So what I'm going to do is show the first full video and then do a complete dissection of everything this gun owner did wrong. And he could only thank God that he hasn't killed anybody and that there's no prosecutor out there that is holding him responsible for initiating a gunfight inside a residential neighborhood. Man says he grabbed his gun and scared the group of men off. What he didn't expect is gunfire was exchanged. This all was caught on surveillance cameras. Fox 5 reporter Eric Perry is live outside the home in Clayton County. So, Eric, what happened? Yeah, Tom, Christine, honestly, what happened, that group of men picked the wrong house cold to try to burglarize here. You can see the evidence on this BMW from that shootout just riddled with gunfire. That man said he just wanted to make sure his wife was protected. I don't want to die at home. <laughs> I survived Afghanistan and everything else. And to die at home in my own yard. The goal for Whitfield Smith was to protect his family and home early Monday morning when he noticed a group of men on his ring camera. I'm noticing uh, a, a young man running from my neighbor's yard across my front lawn into the middle of the street to meet up with two other gentlemen. One of the men made a near fatal decision. Sprints of my driveway. I can see on camera that he's hunched down wearing a gray hoodie and he's got some kind of firearm in his hand. He reaches to try to get into my BMW that's in the driveway. The door is locked. Grab my rifle, head outside. With flip-flops, pajama pants, and no shirt, this veteran went to war to protect his wife who was hiding inside. Boom, 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 boom. There was one gentleman that was on the other side of the trees, and the main protagonist was right here using my truck as a shield. At one point, he kicked off his flip-flops, races inside, puts on clothes, and comes back out. He says he didn't have time to be afraid. You secure this, mother Only time to act. I didn't think that they'd be shooting at me, and I'd be hearing bullets whiz past me. This father fears he would have been dead if it wasn't for his BMW to shield the nearly two dozen bullets. They said, Mr. Smith, you're very brave. You're very brave. But you're very crazy, you're very stupid, but you're very brave. Yeah, and Mr. Smith is alive. Thankfully, no one was injured in any of this. He says those that the group of men actually got away with the firearm that he had inside of his truck there. He also says that after the gunfire really erupted, they tried to break into neighbors' homes to escape. They were unsuccessful, but they are still out there. If you know anything about this, come forward to Clayton County Police. Of course, you can remain anonymous scary moments here in clayton county but that's the latest i'm eric perry fox 5 news yeah okay let's break this down and let's take this step by step and look at all the things that went wrong that were completely avoidable and that could have been used against this gentleman in a court of law and for the naysayers who are going to come to this gentleman's defense let me put some context to this i'm a veteran served eight years was an expert at the m16 and the m16a1 competed competitively with uh, a pistol in IDPA in ESPIC, but concealed carrying for 20 years. So preparedness, it's a very common framework that I and my family talk about on a regular basis. And says he grabbed his gun and scared the group of men off. What he didn't expect is gunfire was exchanged. This all was caught on surveillance cameras. Fox 5 reporter Eric Perry is live outside the home in Clayton County. So Eric, what happened? Yeah, Tom, Christine, honestly, what happened, that group of men picked the wrong house cold to try to burglarize here. You can see the evidence on this BMW from that shootout just riddled with gunfire. That man said he just wanted to make sure his wife was protected. I don't want to die at home. I survived Afghanistan and everything else and to die at home in my own yard. There's a really good chance you're never going to die of a gunfight at home if you don't volunteer to get into one. 
especially when you know that the people that are in your in your driveway are armed. Okay, so let's look at this sign. A prosecutor's wet dream. Warning. No trespassing. Violators will be shot and survivors will be shot again. Oh, the joy a prosecutor would have with you all day long, considering that you went out and not started one gunfight, but two. Let's move on. Phil Smith was to protect his family and home. So if we take a look at this AR, it's not your common AR in a 5.56 caliber. It's actually a 300 blackout, which is an excellent caliber for home defense. But let's take a closer look at this AR, and you'll see other pictures of this AR throughout this uh, video. I don't see any sights on it. This man takes this weapon and shoots at night in a residential neighborhood with no sights, with no optics, no capability of aiming and pointing anywhere to effectively engage his targets in a residential neighborhood. Maximum effective range for an AR-15 and a 300 blackout to be able to hurt or kill somebody without trying too hard. It's going to be right around 160 to 170 yards. Just let's just say, you know, uh, for, you know, for the, for the purpose of this conversation. Early Monday morning when he noticed a group of men on his ring camera. I'm noticing uh, a, a young man running from my neighbor's yard across my front lawn into the middle of the street to meet up with two other gentlemen. One of the men made a near fatal decision. Sprints of my driveway. I can see on camera that he's hunched down wearing a gray hoodie and he's got some kind of firearm in his hand. So what I'm seeing here is that you're engaging at night with somebody who you know has a weapon outside of your house and could be possibly accompanied by two to maybe three other people. Okay. Stupid. Hunger down in your house and protect yourself and your family. Your cars can be replaced. He reaches to try to get into my BMW that's in the driveway. The door is locked. Grab my rifle, head outside. With flip flops, pajama. You recklessly go outside, initiate a gunfight with a rifle with no optics, endangering yourself and your neighbors. It is complete recklessness. There is no excuse for that engagement. No pants and no shirt. This veteran went to war to protect his wife who was hiding inside. Let's look at the excuses for this gunfight. Despite the signs in the yard, an AR-15 that's not prepared to be used in a, in a tactical fashion. Hell, most ranges in the state of Georgia will not let you shoot on their range if your rifle does not have sights. It's either got to be iron sights or it has to be optical sights. But going out and shooting on a range, and most of the ones that I know of here in Georgia, will not let you shoot without optics because you're going to be all over the place. You're going to hurt uh, either someone or you're going to end up shooting one of, the, uh, one of the targeting support systems, which is very expensive to replace. Your wife was in the house. Why did you leave that house? There is no reasonable excuse for you to have exited the house. Now, if she was in that car just pulling in, I get it. But you and your wife were safely in your house. The proper mode of action, in my opinion, would have been to hunker down, call 911, and report it to the police. And if somebody was coming towards your house, towards your door, trying to forcible entry into your house, you wouldn't be having this conversation. This was completely reckless and idiotic because you put everyone at risk. Boom, 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 boom. There was one gentleman that was on the other side of the trees. The thing that stands out to me about this tree is how thick it is. One of the things they teach you in the military during basic training is that trees really, to some degree, are, are your friends. A tree that thick can easily stop a small caliber firearm like a 300 blackout with no problem whatsoever. So at night, not alone does it provide concealment, a place to hide, but it also provides cover, a place that will protect you. So while he's tap dancing around in his flip-flops in the middle of the night in the open, the people who are attacking them have cover and concealment. One is at that tree, and we'll find out that the other person is firing from his truck. And the main protagonist was right here using my truck as a shield. At one point, he kicked off his flip-flops, races inside, puts on clothes, and comes back out. Now that you've gone through all of this, one gunfight, 
guy behind a tree, guy shooting from your car. You're going to go out and do this again? Why in the hell would you risk your life, risk the lives of your neighbor to get into a gunfight for no good goddamn reason? There's no logical reason to do any of this. And as responsible gun owners, I got to call it out. He says he didn't have time to be afraid. Who's the kid my Only time to act. I didn't think that they'd be shooting at me and I'd be hearing bullets whiz past me. This father fears he would have been dead if it wasn't for his BMW to shield the nearly two dozen bullets. You were reckless and you got lucky that you didn't get yourself killed or one of your neighbors walking his dog down the street or some mother going into her kitchen to warm a bottle for her baby and catch a bullet through a window because you just needed to have a gun fight because your ego was hurt. They said, Mr. Smith, you're very brave. You're very brave, but you're very crazy. You're very stupid, but you're very brave. You know what you are is reckless. And this is a shining example of what not to do. In many states, I am again, I'm not an attorney. I am just somebody who's been around gun for most of my adult life. And I will tell you, in many states, you pull this stunt, especially with that sign in the front yard, you're going to go to jail for discharging a weapon within a residential area or a city limit or reckless endangerment. And God forbid if you would have hit somebody and killed somebody, is anything that was in those cars worth dying for? Is it worth getting somebody else killed? Absolutely not. It's unexcusable. I always tell my viewers, make sure you understand the laws that govern your area, your country, your city, state, and municipalities, because it's important to understand and know these rules before you get into an encounter. Because if you find out after it's too late, it may be too late for you. You may have to do some serious time for something that was completely avoidable. Yeah, and Mr. Smith is alive. Thankfully, no one was injured in any of this. He says those that the group of men actually got away with the firearm that he had inside of his truck there. And the reason why I call this gentleman the most reckless gun owner I've seen on YouTube is because after all the things that I've pointed out, you leave a gun unsecure in your car. Are you freaking kidding me? I can understand keeping a gun in your car in a safe when you're going to work or you're going to a no carry area completely get it but you're so lazy that you leave a gun in your car in the driveway of your house secure your gun don't talk to me about oh, it's my constitutional right to keep my gun unsecured in the car that's freaking idiocy because these guns get out on the street and they end up killing innocent people that's the bottom line you give two shits where you keep your gun at Just make sure it's secure you know let's let's be grown-ups about this they're not toys. He also says that after the gunfire really erupted, they tried to break into neighbors' homes to escape. They were unsuccessful, but they are still out there. If you know anything about this, come forward to Clayton County Police. Of course, you can remain anonymous. Scary moments here in Clayton County, but that's the latest. I'm Eric Perry, Fox 5 News. Yeah. I know this part of the um, video seems to be more of a rant, and I apologize, but I am very passionate about the Second Amendment. And I do believe that gun owners, responsible gun owners, need to be an example of good gun ownership. If we don't take the lead on this, the anti-gunners will use situations like this and use it against us. We need to call out bad behavior. Every time that it occurs, we should be calling it out and saying, hey, don't be doing stupid shit. For the uh, pro-gun folks that are like, well, you're being critical and maybe you're not really that, that pro-2A. It's like, look, I have no problem with the AR-15 as a self-defense weapon. It's an excellent self-defense weapon. Just get it prepared for the fights you're going to have. Most encounters happen at night, so I recommend getting some type of uh, variable optic or just a simple red dot. But going out there in the middle of the night when you don't need to, starting and instigating a gunfight, not one but twice, with no optics, unprepared, unknown amount of uh, hostiles that are out there is absolute foolishness. We need to protect our rights by being the model citizen and calling out those that aren't. One thing I want to clarify is that I'm not 100% sure if this AR-15 does not have backup, flip up iron sights. It is possible. From the videos that I've seen, um, it's hard to tell. But if it does, flip up backup sights are not what I would consider to be adequate 
were engaging into a tactical combat fight with multiple assailants in a residential neighborhood. I appreciate your time. Please hit like and subscribe and hit that bell and share this video and share your comments below. Thank you so much.